Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, back to date with Punishing Maverick. Uh, a deck that I haven't played in a long time. Uh, hasn't seen too much play. Uh, a lot of Maverick players either opting for Abzan. Uh, I know Mark's been playing 4-color. Uh, or just going on the Depths plan and playing Naya or Green-White Splash uh, Blast Depths. So, uh, yeah, I think it should be going okay. Uh, the Blast and the Cyborg are obviously quite well positioned, seeing that um, Delva has been main decking Pyroblast. I think that's a great sign that... Uh, red is probably the way to go for Maverick at the moment. <clears throat> hey, Garador, huge thank you. Hey, Sterling, welcome. Mining Man, welcome. Uh, so I just wanted to take a pretty simple approach to, to punishing here and see how we're going. Um, Clots, yeah, so Clots and cards like Hexdrinker obviously lost a lot of points when Prismatic Ending was played, but I think that Clots is a card that I'm going to kind of strategically keep in the deck against the P Prismatic Ending decks so that they trade Prismatic Ending early on and then hopefully don't have it for Clothis. Um, like, sadly, I think that if we had the <laughs> um, reasoning of this creature can't be dealt with punishing, uh, kind of open to all of these cards. So, yeah, I think that although Prismatic Ending obviously is a great answer for a card like Clothis, which otherwise was really uh, I think it's still pretty strong. Um, and even in some of the games against Blue Red Delva, where, where I would just want to have some ongoing graveyard hate uh, and life gain if I need it, Clotha seems pretty sweet. Um, even the other mid-range decks and things like Green White Depths might have a hard time dealing with it, uh, typically playing Prismatic Ending themselves with no real ways to dig for it, which is nice. Um, so pretty keen. I mean, happy to get proven wrong, but I think it's just such a strong threat that um, I would love to see it actually do something. Uh, because of the Punishing Fires... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm running just four main deck spirits as a way to have some game against combo And this is kind of my, my way to, to play against combo and, and blue decks is uh, Have really good hate bears like collect oof spirit endurance, but then also uh, Have ways to protect it with the, the full four mums um, I'm playing a split of two birds three noble uh, as a way to get extra red mana from my creatures Um and then, yeah, the full four blasts, uh, trying out carpets in the side. Because um, I feel like a lot of the games that I lose against Delva, uh, it's it's mana issues. And mainly from them just being aggressive with Wasteland uh, and things like uh, end the festivities on my mana dork. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think the Cradle, I, you don't often see Cradle in Punishing Mav. But I think because of my high density of creatures, I'm happy to have the Cradle. Um, it can also just lead to some really nice plays where... <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Um, yeah, where I can just use the Cradle to get a bit more of an advantage because, uh, as Reed Duke states, Guy's Cradle's most powerful card. It's definitely a, a card that allows you to play a little bit of an unfair game against some of the more fairer decks um, in those sort of matchups. So, see how Cradle performs. Hopefully, okay. Um, I was going to put Thalia in the board, but there's no real matchups where I just want Thalia out of the board. I really want to have more harder hitting cards like Deafening Silence or Blast Effects. So it was pretty hard to hit it. Um, I'm playing a Tireless Tracker in the main deck to have some game in sort of the... Just want to get some card advantage going. And Tireless Tracker is nice because I can draw in my opponent's turn to play around Spirit on board, which is cool. Hey, Strass. Um, the big talking points probably are going to be the Cradle, uh, the Clothis, um, I think that's probably the, the two that I want to see how they how they go. Hopefully not. I had this issue the other day, and I wasn't sure why. Which is because so I'd love to get the uh, the audio fixed before. It happens anywhere else. Uh, 
Because in OBS, it looks like the mic is working, working fine. But we'll see how this goes. Hey, thanks, Mark. All right, I'm going to quickly... I think we'll see how this goes. Hey, GM Miller, a huge thank you. Getting into Mav would be a pretty sweet option. It's a pretty fun deck. Can be competitive in the right meta. Let's close some stuff. And hopefully, yeah, because I was having the issue. I'm actually just going to show you guys where. <laughs> so you can see here with the mic, when I stop talking, does go all the way down it usually buffers like here like that out there ah all right a little bit of technical difficulties here All right, we'll see how this goes. And if it uh, if it does keep going after round one, I will just switch to my webcam mic, which isn't great, but hopefully we'll see how this goes. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Legacy League, Mav, play points, nice. Tough. Technical issues are always the worst, <laughs> to, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I didn't want to do t anything too far-fetched. Um, but hopefully, like, the core of the deck works itself out. It's obviously tough with... A little bit less. Um, I don't mind this hand. We have in, like a uh, term on green suns removal, something quite unfair, something quite fair. The mana is quite okay. Ah, oh, Kevin streams too. Cool. Pony goes to six. A collector oof kind of deck, so uh, probably pretty keen to get this. Uh, get at least a turn two. But I have seen a small tick up in Ant. Also, if my mic doesn't drop out over the next two minutes, if someone in chat could tell me that it's fixed itself, that would be very cool. Noble. That's actually quite nice as well. Now I get to save the Green Suns. I also, I love playing Punishing Maverick as a green-white deck and trying to not show red if I don't have to in game one. Oof, okay. Uh, I was gonna say, not showing that I have red in the deck and then bringing in Blasts is very cool. They go for Kaldra. Okay. I guess there's a world that even um early on. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Ah, uh, you just highlighted your message. <laughs> Classic. You got me there. I think I actually made my first mistake as well. I should have gone for Tega, because if I draw Wasteland, then I can Wasteland and Punishing Fire in the same turn. So definitely a misclick.
Nice. Um, now the question is, do I want to build up my mana? Or do I want to save the green suns? I think I'm happy with the cradle. We get to double spell next turn, which is pretty sweet. Hey, Jide. <laughs> yeah, lands has been a huge amount of fun. So a huge thank you for sending through the donation deck list. Um, cause that really got me on like a lands spite. <laughs> Strix isn't too bad. All right. I'm going to quickly switch my mic over to my webcam and hopefully the quality isn't too bad. I guess we can see and get some feedback from chat. Ending. The only reason they're ending the Strix here is if they have potentially Jide in hand and land. But I could just play the Oof out if I was scared of Jide. We're definitely playing the Cradle. All right. Hopefully, we'll just go back to this and hopefully the cutouts stop, but... Yeah. Why? Why? Hmm. I'm just gonna quickly... Sorry, guys. I'm just gonna re remove all my filters on this. Hopefully that's a bit better. This seems to be doing the trick, which is nice. Okay, definitely playing the cradle. Uh, so I now have some options. I think I'm just gonna play oof and then play night out. I also don't mind trading the Strix with the Arbor here. And then I can play the Knight post-combat. To be fair, I think turning it on and off again is probably the way to go. <laughs> Bant looks really cool. Um, I know Ali plays around with Bant a lot and has been playing it around a lot with the printing of uh, Currency Converter, which isn't on MTGO yet. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's in an older set. Okay, this isn't too bad because we still have Prismatic Ending for the Strix attack to Fairy if they try to tick up. Oh, tick down, sorry. It's a new Commander card. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Just seeing how I want to tap my mana here. It's probably going to be like this attack to fairy play mum and then hold up endurance
it looks like from my end, my mic issues have stopped. So hopefully we're in for a good stream. Wow, force, okay. Well, that definitely tells me they don't have removal, which is quite nice. I think actually, just in case of Merktide, I'm happy to Endurance right now. I think like untap Endurance is something that I should definitely be playing around. Oh no. Of course. Uh, had we finished last night? 3-2, going down to John on Blood Moon, uh, which is pretty funny. If you guys want to see <laughs> what happened, uh, you can find it here. Uh, I think it's just going to be the collector oof. I, if I really... Oh, I went to the end step? Far out, Dougal. Come on, man. I, uh... Yeah, I, sorry. I was definitely in chat there, but... If, if we see a, a Merc here, I'm not going to be too happy. Exactly, Grid. I need you. I just need you sometimes. At least my opponent here needs, uh... Blue Source and Merktide, which hopefully is a little bit too hard for them to, to grab here. I can also move chat across. There we go. Oh, just a pass pack. Okay. Canopy. Um, is there any reason to draw first? I think here I'm happy just to attack first. Second main oof. And now I can create, I can endurance in their upkeep. Swords on that. Okay. They have one card left. The only reason not to endurance here uh, and do it in my turn is because of hardcast force of will, but definitely something to consider. There's also the consideration in case my opponent gains life this turn, I should have held up the plateau to get back the punishing fire. There's also a case, <laughs> if I didn't think all of this would happen, to actually hold the Horizon Canopy for Tireless Tracker, in case we draw Green Suns. Script's pretty cool. Hmm. I'm going to start with draw a card. Off the Cradle. Okay. Um... I'm not doing anything with my turn here anyway, so I'm not going to use this mana. I'm going to hold up the script at instant speed. Okay. Also holding the land for tiles tracker. I don't think this is really doing too much here anyway. Ooh. Oh, oh, <laughs> opponent. Did you see this play? I don't think you did. Yeah, could also block with a uh, dried up and then bounce it with Scrib, which is quite nice. Brainstorm's okay. Obviously the play that I had in mind was that if I don't block, I get the punishing fire back. 
too good. Okay, brainstorm, uh, but no shuffle effect, so that's pretty nice for us. Jeez. I will put the bird into play because it is another red source. But this is not a, a not a good race. <laughs> Wasteland. Okay. Hey, Big. Yeah, had a pretty late stream last night. <laughs> or early this morning, I should say. Um, I'll play this. Because if they kept Kaldra, I don't think they would have. But 2, 4, 6. I'm happy to go after their white. Uh, I could go after double black here. Triple black. I don't think it really matters. <coughs> The only argument for going after black is that they have basics in blue and white. They don't attack. That's classic. Swords. Um, I'm pretty happy to see if they trade here and then we can return the punishing fire. I think the dried up has kind of done its work. Oh. Another thing we can do is swords their creature to trigger punishing fire because they gain life and then get it back. So we have a few options here. Cool deck though. Okay. Two cards in hand. They get Kaldra again. Okay. But still no attack. Okay. Well, now I'm pretty happy to Sword Solitude. And just hope they don't have like false negation. <laughs> Nice. Nice. All right, come on, Green Sons. I need you. Spirit's not too bad either. Yeah, P-Fire <laughs> doing a lot of work here. Like, the first matchup we play against, we have a two-power creature, a two-power creature. All right. So three cards in hand, four cards, swords, all right. Chase is okay. We'll 
Well, Chase isn't okay, but... <laughs> Hmm, okay. I mean, QB off the top would be sweet. Knight of Autumn isn't that great. That sucks because they're so close to Kaldra as well. So I think you would just have to play the Knight of Autumn as a 4 3. But yeah, definitely tough. We found the knight, but otherwise we found a mix of kind of hate bears and mana. Just haven't really been able to get like a good threat on the board. Which is fair enough as well. I mean, they've, they're, they're definitely a deck that targets creature decks pretty heavily with like Solar Troop, Prismatic Inning, Swords Plushes. It ain't easy. Yeah, Grove is also a nice way to get in there, but this Kaldra is going to be insane. We do have Prismatic Inning for the germ though. But they're also at a stage where they can pretty much just play creatures after the fact and then just equip and swing. But most of the creatures look to be X2s, so I guess Grove would be okay. A mix of Grove and, uh, and Prismatic Endings. Okay. I mean, night is a way to grove, which is cool. Jeez. Void rend? New card. Cool to see him get in play. Playing two in, in loam? Esper colors in loam? Yes! Yes! That's what I want to hear. Looks like Keldra. Now is the time, if any, to draw Questing Beast. Because attack with the Keldra and then we untap, we draw Green Suns. We then have protection with Mum as well. Alright, come on deck. Not really the powerhouse that I was looking for. I don't think I attack with the mum. The fact that uh, Kaldra gets through Supreme Verdict as well is just crazy. Oh, yikes. This is probably just a uh, game because of Jitte. Look at Batterskull. I guess they can hardcast Batterskull. At least Batterskull is a way to get back. Oh, they don't attack. Oh, okay. Interesting, they hold up five mana. Hmm. 
Sadly, I think it's just passed because we could give pro black attack. We could punishing fire Stoneforge, pro black attack. We could just punishing fire the Jace. I'm pretty happy just to pass. Well, I, I'm not, not too happy, but don't really have another great option. I mean, they can even like put in with Stoneforge the Batterskull, then equip it to the Germ to attack for nine. Yeah, watching clock for sure. Okay. Uh, this looks to be like an Esper control deck. We'll save that sweet point of life if possible. Hey Jam, I think this game is just going to be trying to get as much clock off my opponent. Yikes. Oof. Because I think if, um... Like, if, if, if I do have game, I think I hit the Narset there with the Punishing Fire so they don't get the extra card, but I'd like to see what they have. Like, if they play... I assume there's Supreme Verdict in the deck somewhere, but if they play it main deck, that'd be kind of nice. I guess it doesn't really matter once it's post board. This is the life sometimes. For those of you who want to play Maverick, get ready. <laughs> it can be pretty uh, brutal at times. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be really grindy. I obviously like the blast effects and I don't mind bringing in all four. I, I, I like the carpets, um, over creatures. I think that's a pretty easy fix. Um, I don't mind dropping some number of swords, but at the same time, having an answer for Stoneforge Mystic turn two is, is very relevant. Um, I could see an endurance coming out. I do want library. I do want choke. Uh, I do want the court. That's probably it. Fiery is definitely interesting as a way to deal with planeswalkers, potentially. It looks like they're not running today. They, pro they probably are out of the board, but I don't think Oof is where I want to be. Court is pretty risky, but I guess they do have flash creatures, which is pretty annoying. Yeah, maybe not. Um, library actually might just not make the cut because Spirit's good for us and they run Narset. But I, I do like some number of these. To be fair, the carpets aren't the 
greatest. But they, they could be relevant. The only reason that I like the, the knights is because of their mana base. I think having Knight of Autumn and the Prismatic Endings is enough to deal with artifacts and enchantments that I don't need the forces. I could see Endurance going down to one. Library. I think Cradle can come out in this sort of matchup. Like, there's not really a case of us having a, a large board of creatures, especially against Supreme Verdict. Maybe like just two. The thing about like birds great because it taps for red, but nobles great because turn one noble, turn two threat, especially on the draw, is a way to answer a turn three to fairy bounce your threat because then you can actually attack with exalted. It could be cutting down the swords. I do have to think pretty quickly here. Um, it might just be a knight as a green sun's target and see how this plays out. Hmm. Okay. We have Tega into turn two spirit with pyro up, which doesn't really do anything against removal, but the double wasteland's also quite nice if they are an Esper. The mana base isn't that great. But we're definitely going for... It's a little bit tough because... We have to choose between Tega or Sav Savannah here. And I assume they bolt the bird, which means that I probably just want to go for Spirit. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't see the bird surviving, which makes me want to go for turn two spirit, which means I get Savannah. Yeah. I think that's my reasoning. <laughs> Welcome to your world, we'll take a Savannah. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. But against this deck with so much removal, hopefully this is correct. I mean, it could just be like a turn one ponder from them and then we don't really do anything. Okay. Ooh. I could go Scrib Ranger into Spirit, but then I don't hold up Blast. <clears throat> and honestly, if they brainstorm here, I'm pretty happy to pyro that. Yeah. Force, sure. Oh, they just forced the Strix. Okay, that's fine. That's one less force for the Tireless Tracker, which is quite nice. Um, Alright, Tracker. Clue, pass. But the double wasteland versus the double basic start is not where I want to be. And now they can just get a basic planes as well. So kind of a mulder five. We'll see. Hey, Dark Poet Bill. Welcome. Uh, Plague's okay. When we get to Ramanap next turn, unless they have solitude. No, cool. Ooh, uh, no, I still like ramming up here, get double, uh, double triggers off clue. Jeez.
They also know about the choke now. They are down to one card. Hmm. Classic. <laughs> All right. Probably just QB. Track is gone. Yeah. Clothis is interesting, but but I think QB's just better here. QB's more fun, let's be honest. Void rend, yikes. They can exile it, yeah, and I assume they would have just exiled that anyway. Tough spot. This deck has a lot of removal. And probably, I think in this case, happy I didn't bring in the uh, the court. Like this version of control deck just has like the creatures that are evasive in a way that I don't really want to block and also just has so much actual removal. Huh. I mean, this is where <coughs> Fiery Confluence would be really strong. Hmm. Pretty happy just allowing this. I mean, Carpet doesn't do a whole lot. Hey, XJ. Haha, <laughs> it was. Congrats on your trophy. Very cool to see. V. 
Vivian Monster's Advocate. Yikes. It's just so hard to hit, to play like a walker over something like a, um, uh, what's the name of that five mana enchantment that makes construct things? Paradox Zone, yeah. Paradox Zone not being able to get um, attacked is pretty huge. No, we'll just get rid of this now. It's just tough because like they have the, the two mana to actually untap and just prismatic ending this. That The choke, although it is hitting two islands here, isn't really doing a whole lot. That's true, especially but like uh, like in this sort of matchup, like we're not going to really care about Besaidu. I guess Void Rend is just a, a good answer to both anyway. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not going our way. Yeah, I don't think we have great outs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tough. Cool to see our uh, void rent in Legacy. Definitely pretty awesome. I do like the look of the, uh, I think it's a, it's not Domri, but the new, uh, four mana red green walker in, I think the new commander set, I think it's called M Minu or Mu. That card is really cool. Minsk and Boo. Yeah. That, look, that card looks really fun to play around with. Yeah. Esper has a lot of good cards and like there, like can easily run off a, a basic mana base as well, which is pretty brutal. It's kind of the way that. I used to beat Esper was just that their ma mana base wasn't that great. But... There is a world where I was just too aggressive as well on that Pyroblast and should have just kept it to protect the spirit from a force of will. Flinging a knight's cool. Um can also yeah giving like the deck some reach also just creating a 1-1 one, one straight away is pretty awesome to give it i guess it can become a 4-4 four, four? because it gets plus three plus three but yeah i'll definitely be playing around it with it well clothus isn't uh void exile Ah, it's destroy. Target. Yeah, okay. I thought it was exile. So I didn't really take void into consideration, but. Yeah, closest would have been pretty sweet. I kind of just felt that QB gave them less time to find an answer. Yeah, maybe exile would be too good at instant speed for three mana. Tony. All right, Tony's going to be on uh, his version of Storm. So, 
Uh, definitely not a hand like this that I want to keep. We, do, uh, we don't even have Thalia's main deck. I think we're looking just for like a turn one Noble Hierarch, turn two Green Suns for Oof. Uh, and this is it. We'll keep this. Probably bottoming the Wasteland. Because the Endurance is also quite good, I believe. We're definitely keeping this. And I, I think I want to keep this just to make sure we have turn two Oof. There is a question that maybe I don't have the time to actually deploy Prismatic Ending. So it's probably between these two. Yeah, I think it is ending. Because I think if they play like a turn one... Um, like, there's a world if they play like an LED out that I just want to deal with it, but... I really am not too sure about endurance. Defense grid, sure. Well, now the question is if I draw a land here, do I just wasteland this? They're currently on three cards. And then even if we don't find a land over the next two turns... Uh, we can play turn one Hierarch, turn two Spirit. I'm pretty happy to try to buy some time. Like the land is there for the taking. There's a world where that is not on an artifact start. And the deck does play a, a lot of like non land sources of mana so the chances of them not having a land there is pretty high which is nice because it looks like it worked out led oh they have the echo oh we had we drew the oof okay i guess we couldn't endurance anyway because of the defense grid Now it's a case of, can we live a turn? Huge, 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 huge. Nice. Um, hmm. I don't think there's a Green Suns card here that actually is just like lights out. So I think I'd rather just get Mum into play in case of a Burning Wish line. I can also Mum hold up Endurance, which is cool. Actually, no, I can't because of the defense grid. So I think it's just going to be Mum and then Endurance in my turn. But I think it actually doesn't matter. Yeah, it looks like they just have a hand that is there. But I think I would just attack with Collector Oof for three. Play Mum, play Cradle, which taps for three, play Endurance, and then pass back. And then potentially even Green Suns for Questing Beast the following turn. That'd be at 11, 9, 6, 5, and then Questing Beast is 4 to put them at 1. Nice. All right. Uh, this is a, a tough matchup because I like the Blasts. The, sorry, I like the Deafening Silences. I like the Forces. The Blast hit Echo, but I think that's it. I'm going to take out those. Tireless Chakra. Clothes. A lot of the grindy stuff I don't really want. I could double Mum. Yeah, okay, there we go. Because the um, the Cradle, it kind it's kind of free with the Cradle, which is nice. Which actually means it would be Lethal the following turn, which is cool. Yeah. I think just because it probably does more than another card, I am going to bring in the four blasts. The spirits I don't mind because of Bergy, so I might just take out the prismatic endings. And a knight. 
and the remnant. Yeah, there is a world where I want the endings just for that, so... I could just see something like this. What a nice combo, hate. Endurance is fine as a threat, but typically it doesn't really hit Echo because of how it works out with not getting priority. Yeah, they might actually see the Blast as a surprise, which is really nice. Yeah, Script's probably the, the card that just isn't really too effective here. So really looking for a hand with Deafening Silence, or at least one that can hold up Blast. So pretty happy to mull aggressively for that. Uh, yeah, I don't think a hand gets any better. Like, we have an answer for Bergy, we have Deafening Silence, we have Force and Green Card, and then we have a two lander with a Hate Bear that is both Pressure and Disruption, so... I mean, if this isn't kind of a, a hand to go all in on, then... Tony's gone to five cards. Tomb, Grim, LED. Oh, um, do I want to respond to this? They have one card left. Surely it's Echo. But can I really do anything here? No. Unless I had Endurance as well, I could force and then. Force doesn't do anything because they can just float, but if they have Echo, it just shuffles back anyway. Yeah, it is Echo. Did I just play Horn out? Hey Nuke, thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. <coughs> uh, just gonna run this back. I think that's a really good example of kind of what you just have to take on the chin as a Maverick player is that you don't have interaction, especially on the draw for a lot of combo decks. Uh, no, I really want Deafening Silence or no, nah, Deafening Silence or Pyroclasm or, or our Pyroblast. I'll play the Grove. I guess I could get Plateau off this. Kind of hides it as well. Yikes. 
And there's Echo. Uh, plateau. But now they do have this. Okay. Jeez. Nice. There's potentially a world where I prismatic ending the chrome mox there and keep the sword in case they drew into an artifact to then turn on the mox opal. But hopefully we get a turn here where we, where we can untap and just hit that chrome mox with our prismatic ending. You can never be too sure. <laughs> you can never be too sure. That's all she wrote is something that I'm only going to say when it comes up that my opponent has conceded. Okay. Hmm. No, I really want to draw a land for this endurance so I can put that echo away just in case my opponent has some sort of out. Nice. Also turns it into a two-turn clock, which is pretty huge. Come on, Krakus. Spirit. I actually don't mind attacking with both here. because of the backup spirit. This also nearly turns off the tomb. This also turns off them tapping this for one. Nice. And I think they're highly rewarded for mulling down to a four card hand to find turn one interaction in blast, which is pretty nice. And kind of ex exactly why I like trying out Punishing at the moment, because Blast is just so good. We're on the board. We're on the board. Look, I, I, I do miss Thalia, but... I, I would love to see, like, a version of Mav that plays like Chromebox or, or Pedal or something in the board to get your Hey Bears out on turn one against combo. That'd be kind of cool, but the metagame isn't really there yet. But one day it will be. Yeah. Like, I think that's a great, that's a great example of where just because you have seven cards or six cards doesn't make it any better than potentially a really good five card. Uh, this is pretty nice. Turn one green suns. Probably off the canopy, just so I hide the red in case it is another combo deck and I don't want to show the red. This is a little bit of a no-bow with the Scrib Ranger though, as this isn't a forest, but I think that's okay.
Still though. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I kind of want to play around days. I also don't really need the scrib oh, to deal with the Delver at the moment because we have the scrib. I don't mind play wasteland. Play scrib now. And then if they try to daze it, we can just pay for it. We are a little bit hit here unless we draw a white source so we can double spell. We don't. But that is probably okay. I think getting down spirit here is better than prismatic ending. Especially knowing they have ponder in hand. Smoke tide. Yikes. It's only a four four. Knight's only a 3-3. Three, three. It's pretty poor. Wasteland isn't great. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just a case of not having swords in the in the opener is what really led to this. Six, seven, eight, two mana. Yeah, I think it's just the ramen up that I don't care about. This might even be the extra point they need. 
Especially they brainstorm into land and then Merc tied me. Yeah. Uh, Collect Oof, Knight of Autumn, Tireless Tracker, Cradle, Pyro, Carpet, Choke, Endurance, Fiery, Manadork, Manadork for two carpets, Questing Beast. Hmm. It's probably a three drop, but I'm not sure what. No maze, because the mana's just uh I don't have I don't have room for the maze. But in a more like toolboxy land deck, like uh depths, I can definitely see it. Hmm. The last two cuts are pretty tough. I think it's just going to be a knight. It could just be a green suns, but the ability to accelerate turn one is just so crucial. I think it's going to be a knight for a choke. Like they do the same sort of thing in this matchup, and I think I have enough like ways to get through damage with endurance. It might just be a green suns. I I much rather have the noble, which is tough, but pretty happy to see how this goes. Uh. Okay, but it really relies on the hierarch. That's the only issue. But I think otherwise it's it's got enough that like I'm not going to go to six. Opponent kept seven. I kind of like just slamming choke here, to be honest. I think choke's the card that I care about the least. I think just getting this off the table is is best. But not wastelanding me is really interesting. Like, what do they need this for? Hmm. 
I think I can play around days here and it's it's bad because I I can play around days <coughs> Apologies and also giving them the land back is pretty huge I think now I'm pretty happy just to try to run this uh, spirit to to victory What you got? What you got? Hearse. Okay. Maybe in response I'll just cast Endurance now. Nice. I mean, <laughs> if, if they did have the bolt or the red source for this hierarch, we would not be in the same position. Like, we still don't have a white source outside of Noble. I'm not going to play this. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'd probably rather hold up endurance here than play the mum, but getting the mum online is pretty nice. It's just tough because like now we, we also know there's no white sauce on top either. Um sure. Like there's definitely a world where going there is interesting. Alright. The only reason that I like Canopy is it casts a turn one mana dork. But I think there's definitely, I think like one of the weaknesses of Pun is definitely the mana base. There's, there's obviously going to be uh, a lot of play with what you can play. If we do have a few, we have a lot of ways to find red. I was playing with a second Tager and just two Groves, but I, I like the thought of three Grove, two Fire. Uh, I'm not going to change anything. Just hope. I mean, Choke, they're doing a lot of work. Which typically Choke can be pretty... Tough. Uh, this doesn't have an answer to DRC, but I think the double boss is just too good. It also just has mana, which is really nice. Yeah, like, a lot of the time, um, you just won't be able to play choke. Like, you'll just die to what's on board, which is tough. But I, I do like one, because there are, there are moments where choke can be really strong, but you definitely have to be patient with it against Delva, because... There's no point playing it on turn three if your opponent has like Delva DRC in play. Like, you just can't take that that option. Hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna take this. 
I could get like a dried up there and block, but if they have submerged, that's a pretty huge loss. More lands are not really where I want to be though. No flip. Um, I'm just gonna respond to the ponder here. I'll get Tega. Actually, no. They keep on top. This is the start that I don't want to see. Okay. Um. Do I just slam Clothis? I mean, I can't keep playing around days with this sort of board from them. Okay, that's fine. Counterbalance. They brought in counterbalance, that's really interesting. They also bought on the bolt. Huh. I thought they would have got really aggressive, but maybe not. Um take out the bolt. I'm going to start with blast. They're going to surveil. Yikes. They keep. Oh, they're not showing. Interesting. Uh, I guess that does make this a 3-3, which is pretty rough, but what can you do? Maybe it's a Merc Tide then. That would be brutal. Surely it's a Merc Tide. Okay. A small bit of stability here, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to draw with Canopy here first. Ooh. I think Endurance here is number two is better than otherwise. I'm just going to cast this in response.
Uh, I probably should have targeted me to get these back in the deck, to be fair. I think that was incorrect to just not target anyone, in a way. Hey, D5, welcome. Hey, Matt. Big fan. Hope you're doing well. They're also so close to just, like, bolt and bounce. Are you still with Amtrak? And are you still with uh, in SEO? Um, I'm going to respond to this first with the fetch to get Dried Arbor because it can block the DRC and then the submerge can resolve. End is fine. And then let's have Bolt. All right. Not too much to do there. <laughs> Tough. Four years at Amtrak? Nice, that's very cool. Latest boss is superb. Very cool. I like to hear that a lot. You don't often hear it either. Bosses can sometimes be pretty hit and miss for people, so. I can say the same. Really good boss, very happy. But I've definitely been in a situation where uh, a boss hasn't been great. <laughs> Yeah, still in SEO, working for a company called Finder, which is a big comparison site. A little bit like Nerd Wallet in the US, but it is also a uh, US based, which is pretty sweet. I'm gonna keep this. And just gonna go for a Savannah here. And accelerate. But there is a world where it's better to go for Mum into Spirit against a Tundra deck. Hmm. Especially because then next turn I could actually play the Noble off the Cradle, if needed. Oh, they're passing. Well, now we have options. I need to be Spirit first into Mum. Wow, triple brainstorm, but no fetch land? Are they digging for one more card? <laughs> Yikes. Oh my gosh. Teff bounce? No. Prismatic ending. Sure. Um, I think just in case this is a Merktide deck, which have just been popping up in every single uh, deck I've been playing against. I'm pretty happy to go with Endurance here. I can't Clothis and Endurance. One, two, three, four, five mana. But we can just play Endurance and see how that goes. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty happy when the, the format changes. Just a little bit. This feels, however, like a Supreme Verdict, potentially. 
Um, we do have Colothus, Colothus to back it up, which is nice. But I'm more than happy to play around Merc Tide more than like a one-off Supreme Verdict, so. Still in a nice spot. Just fetching for five mana. Okay. Another nice set. Oof, that's pretty good. I will play this because of days undoing. Okay. Tef does bounce. Oh, they bounce the spirit. Okay. High rock. Of course. Interesting. Why flash and the snap? What's the plan here? Are they like a Jeskai Stoneblade deck that has like a Jide? Okay. Yikes. See if we can get the Narset off the field. I guess they already have a Narset, so they don't really care about it. Oh, well, they're gonna block. Okay. plan. Okay. Find a force. Ooh. <clears throat> we know they have force of will, but I still don't mind the thought of green suns here to make them at least have a card as well. One, two, three, four, five. attack them. There's a world where Punishing Fire can can get it. Jeez. Uh, they pitched a Force Negation. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five. Of course. Lol. Tough. Alright. Uh, probably down to just the noble carpet's good. I don't mind the choke, the fiery justice. The court's probably not that great here because of so many flash creatures. Uh, Cradle, I don't mind taking out some number of swords. Uh, collect oof. Hmm. Mum, spirit, pyroblast. Punishing fire. Like this is pretty good. There is a world where I want the sword, the the library, but they have so many good ways to answer it. We do have the pyroblast to turn off Narset and Hellbreacher. I could see like a wasteland coming out. Actually, just pretty happy with with how it how it stands. Uh, a one lander, no. Um, okay. Turn one mum, turn two spirit. Drop dried up here. Yeah, ending's not the greatest, but could potentially just be like our out to a, a three mana walker. Tundra. I kind of just want to hit that. You don't often get too many chances to. We're not doing anything with the mana anyway from the carpet. Hey Master, thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Fetch pass, interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty happy to keep the blast for actual threats. Looks like they're brainstorm locked, which is nice. We get some time here. Yikes. Hey, Master. Thanks for tuning in, especially for a 1 a.m. stream. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I like Knight here because we can hopefully start attacking their mana base. But what they can do is like tick down, we get pro in response, they then do something else. Uh, 
Yikes. I don't think there's much to, to gain from this game. I think it's just too far gone after we just missed the uh, the third land drop for a little while. Tough. Maybe if the closest Clothis comes down on turn three, we can do something, but at turn eight, when they have a Teferi in play, they can just bounce or draw a card. The, the, the game's over. Tough. These blue streak control decks have been really tough to come up against. Yeah, I would assume there's like maybe one verdict main deck, one sideboard. But it's always tough because like they have so much good spot removal that relying on just one creature to deal damage is not going to be good enough. So you kind of have to go wide and then you just play yourself into those. Hopefully we can finish on a high. Mm. No. Okay. Happy to keep this bottom of the ramen up. I think Clothis is probably a little bit better than ramen up. Okay. Up against burn. Okay. Nice. The question is, do I have time to get Clothus online? I think I could. I don't want to go for basics though, which is, I want to go for basics though, which is tough early on just to turn off price of progress. Yeah, Teague could be a goer because Teague also turns off Prismatic Ending. So with Mum, it's a little bit nicer, but Prelate's tough because like you can name four, but then they have like at three, they have to Fairy Bounce. At one, they have um, Swords to Plowshares. And they also, of course, have things like um, Prismatic Ending, which can scale. Hey, Paul. So if I go basic forest into Dried Arbor, it's tough. Because then I can't double spell turn two because I have two green mana. But maybe that's okay. Hey, Racket. I think a lot of the, the money cards from green, white, Maverick uh, do split fairly well across uh, green, white depths, which is awesome. So things like Savannah's, your fetches, green suns. So. I think if you enjoy the deck, that's that's definitely the, the priority. Noble Hierarch on top. Interesting, nothing. In that case, it's probably just going to be Wooded Foothills for a red source. And just hold up Punishing Fire. Without the Cradle, it's tough because Cradle does give you options for some pretty unfair starts. Huh. Oh. I guess I take one here. Ah, oh, there's no... Ah, oh, I played the wrong fetch then. Yeah. If I really thought about this. I mean, I, I just lost a life because I didn't really need to. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was poor sequencing. Mum...
Okay, that's a good sign for us. Maybe, just maybe. I mean, my opponent does have five cards in hand, so... Like, I can fetch, go down to two, swords my own creature, go to three. Burn's gonna be tough. I don't have much. Like, Deafening Silence can buy some time. Force is good. Fiery Justice isn't too bad. Spirits. Um, oof out. Probably some number of spirits. Endurance is fine as a body. Trek is probably a little bit too late. Ramanap can come out. Oof. Okay. Turn one bird, turn two scrib. We can then start returning stuff. We have wasteland if we really need it to wasteland ourselves. We have a good uh, threat in endurance and some backup in our uh, in source supply shares, which is pretty nice. I wonder if they bolt the bird. They chain lightning the bird. Okay, it's a pretty good draw. Um, I am just going to fetch a basic here and then play Clothis. Every community is a delight. Big shout out to the Discord. Good people. Hmm. Okay. Force of Vigor off the top is pretty nice. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, I should have forced first, 100%. It's really just a case. My only thought was like they're doing a post-combat like Sulfuric Vortex, and I really want to play around that. Okay. Um. 
Um, I'm definitely not putting myself into fire. Uh, I mean, this is actually an interesting position because if we cast the Endurance here, we take two and go down to four, which opens us up to Fire Blast. However, if we get to attack for four next turn and two from Clothis, they go to one, and this kind of locks them out from anything but Fire Blast. And seeing that they're one, three, I'm pretty happy to see if they have Fire Blast or not. I'm going to target no one because I want all the spells. And now we just hope. Nice. Haha. <laughs> All right. Uh, running it back. Uh, pretty happy with this hand. Matter acceleration, two pieces of removal. That is fiery justice. Just a nice bit of a, uh, Bit of a sweeper that also has some. Um, I kind of like fetch pass here. Get a basic planes and deal. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite us, but I think I'm just going to drop the Caracas here. This does make night bigger if we draw into it, which is nice. Lothus. I'm still going to fetch here. Hey Nick, thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. I was just about to say we haven't seen Eidolon yet. And there's Eidolon. Still pretty happy just to build out my mana here. Is punishing better than green white? Uh, that's pretty tough. I think both are in pretty <laughs> sad states, but I think that having pyroblast in your deck is comes at a small cost. Like you could easily play a, a punishing maverick deck that is just <coughs> um, green white with uh, a splash for pyroblast and just like a, a tager in the deck or something else i think green white right now is just a bit too fair and the cost of having a third color is just so small that you might as well take the huge upside of you know getting something like pyroblast in your in your deck hey thanks for the follow jeff too kind most of your matter is Delva, yeah, then I highly recommend the uh, the Red Splash. And if you got 8 cast as well, then yeah, Pyroblast is, is fantastic there as well. Uh, okay, so we're definitely dealing with this. Uh, I'm probably then just going Spirit into Deafening Silence. There is a world where like endurance is better than spirit and prismatic ending because the three, four body is just going to block the, the swift spear anyway. And then we also have the prismatic ending for uh, some sort of uh, enchantment that's going to be hard to beat. Like so very, like, like vortex, like that's an ex exact example of what I want to keep the prismatic ending for. But 
But there is a world where Endurance 7, 9, the Vortex is kind of two, two turns for us, which is nice. Wow, they're not? Surely. They're gonna chain me. I can chain back. But I gain them alive. This is actually interesting. No, I think getting endurance on board is better here than actually casting the chain. Because then it's three turn, three damage over two turns. And if I draw into something next turn that I want to cast, I can't hold up both endurance and like another three drop. So I think I am just going to take this and not send back. Potentially just too slow. Yeah. Tough. Hey Kev. Thanks for the raid. And thanks for the games before. Unfortunately, uh, this league went really rough, but um, I felt like the deck did, like the, the, the power level of the cards was okay. It was more a case of just not really drawing into the half of the deck that I need. And some of those blue, like blue stew decks, are, are quite hard to to match on a creature deck when you have so many good answers. Game one, but I did like the thought of the the blast effects. I could see a world where we just take out a lot of the red spells, play a green white build, and then just have the blast in the sideboard. Obviously, then it's a big case of like, why not just play green white depths then with the Naya splash because it's pretty much doing the same thing, but it's just a better, more competitive deck. And I think the answer is that I just like playing creatures. But I could see a world where... Yeah, it's just more of a... A Maverick-style deck that potentially plays Thalia in the main deck instead of the Punishing Fires in the Groves. Yeah, it could be like the... Uh, the white count is pretty high, but like... It's not, it's not too different. Like the mana base is still pretty strong. I think the cradle could be potentially be something else, but um, yeah, it's probably worth using a calculator to work out what sort of mana base this deck should have. But I, yeah, I just, I just feel like if you are playing Mav right now, then Blast is probably the best way to play it. And I, I don't want to play too many colors, so like a green-white base with just a red small splash seems really nice, but it's definitely a big case of like, is it is it worth playing these? Or is it better to do something like taking those out? Adding another prismatic ending. And then adding Thali is back in. Could also move to like a um, a once version of the tech deck potentially. I actually don't mind Clothis. I think Clothis was pretty strong. And at least like if, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have a pet card, it's probably gonna be the big Clo. Well, that's only twenty lands. Okay, yeah, that's that's a big uh, big yikes. I think that it's a 3-3 split. These are still fine. Yeah, I think that's probably better sideboard cards for control. I kind of had the... Uh, 
the Court of Grace and the Library for more like mid-range matchups, not so much control. Pot potentially like zone is just better than the Grace. And I definitely want to go up on... Yeah. There's a, a, a bit of work to do with this. I could see this and then just like two more lands. Like even a third Savannah. Yeah, I just like, I'm a huge fan of library, but I, I don't think it's, it just doesn't do what you want it to these days. Like there's just so many answers to it that it's, it's really hard to get the value off it. And usually if I'm untapping with library, I'm in a pretty good position anyway. That I think that like the upside of having Spirit of the Labyrinth main deck far outweighs the upside of having library main deck. And then you still have ways to get card advantage through things like Tiles Tracker or, or Ramen App Excavator. It's definitely tough. Like the, the last card could just be a main deck library for the matchups where I have library and don't have Spirit. And then I have another sideboard card to, to play around with, which is kind of nice. But yeah, I probably wouldn't mind something like like this. 22 lands is a little bit low, especially with the Cradle. But we do have an extra, like we do have five mana dorks, which is nice. Some nice ways to play against the blue decks. A pretty solid um, mix of cards in the Green Suns package. Some good removal as well. Hmm. Anyway, that's going to be me. A huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. Um, a big thank you to Kev for the raid. Uh, I'm going to see who else is streaming <coughs> and send you guys over there. But if you do like this content, definitely consider finding me on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, it looks like Caleb's playing. Just some modern. I haven't seen anyone playing Legacy, so... Apologies for that. You guys are more than welcome. Uh, a big thanks once again. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Enjoy your weekends. Stay safe. And uh, I'll probably be back on Tuesday night with a co-stream with uh, Michael Mapson, which is really cool, playing out some Naya Depths. Uh, so that should be really strong. So uh, hopefully I'll see you then. Cheers.